Thanks, Stefano, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll be talking about arguments of proximity. This is a joint work with uh, Yael Kalai. So the setting that I want to consider is the following. We have Alice, who, let's say, is a medical researcher or a social scientist, and she has uh, access to some huge database. So some, uh, if she's a medical researcher, some public health information, or uh, maybe it's the Twitter graph if she's a social scientist. So really huge database, and she wants to run some sort of statistical computation on this database. Unfortunately, Alice is only a very poor researcher. She doesn't have access to expensive uh, computer, computing machinery, and she can't afford uh, to, to, to download this database or even to just run in time that is linear in the database size. So she can't even read the entire database. But still, she wants to perform a computation. Thankfully, nowadays, we have this notion of cloud computing. So uh, what we'd like is to have Bob, who uh, thankfully owns a lot of servers, uh, very powerful servers, and Alice would like to have Bob perform the computation for her. So we have these powerful servers. They have no uh, problem to download the entire database to perform the computation. And once uh, the server has the result, uh, it can communicate it to Alice. So that's great. The only problem is that Alice doesn't want to entirely trust the server. So she's afraid that either maybe the server is just lazy and just sending some default answer without actually performing the expensive computation. Or maybe the server is even being totally malicious. It's uh, intentionally trying to uh, mislead uh, Alice into a wrong answer. So Alice wants to be able to verify this uh, claimed result that, the server, uh, that the, server, the server claims is true. So there's been a lot of work on um, outsourcing computation in a way that you can verify in linear time, which is, which is of course very remarkable because just performing the computation itself could, could take a lot more than linear time. But in our setting, that won't do because uh, as I said before, Alice can't even afford to just run in linear time in her input. So we want sublinear time verification. Um, so this notion was first considered by, in a paper about 10 years ago by Ergun Kumar and Rubenfeld, and it was recently revisited by Guy Rothblum, Vadhan, and Wigderson uh, two years ago. And the question that this paper asked is, can we verify without even reading the input? The reason that we can't even read the input is that if we want to run in sublinear time, in particular, we can't even read the entire input. And maybe the initial reaction to this question is an obvious no. Right? We can think of a function that is uh, very sensitive to bit flips. So think, for example, of uh, you want to check if uh, the parity of the database is zero, then the server can always just you know, flip a random bit and supply a proof that corresponds to that tweaked database. And if you run in sublinear time, your chances of catching that are extremely low. So it seems as though a solution to this problem uh, can be had, but thankfully, this is possible if you're willing to allow for an approximate answer. And the notion of approximation that um, these two uh, papers took and that we follow, follows the property testing literature, and it relaxes uh, the answer in the following way. So we won't uh, force the, or require that the verifier reject every false input, but rather only inputs that are blatantly false, so very, look very, very different from correct inputs. And the picture to have in mind is the following. So we have our language L, which is this blue area in the picture. And the area that is, uh, this is sort of uh, um, inputs that are in the language. And the red area is, is the inputs that are, far from, that are not in the language. Now we're also going to look at the area that's close to L. So we're going to measure distance and Hamming distance. Look at inputs that are, very, uh, that are say, you need to uh, flip in most 0 0.01 bits uh, in order to get an accepting input. So this gives us this new uh, purple area. What we require from our verifier is to accept every yes instance, so every instance within the blue area, to reject every instance in the area that's currently in red, and in the purple area we have no guarantee, the, these uh, inputs that are relatively close to L. And I want to stress that this is really a new type of proof system and what the verifier is convinced is not that X is in the language, but rather that X is uh, close to an input that is in the language. So it's a proof of proximity to the language. And in fact, you can think of this as 
uh, an interactive proof variant of property testing. So we're augmenting the property testing uh, framework by adding an uh, online interaction with an, a powerful but untrusted prover. More formally, um, this is the setting that we have. We have our, our verifier, Alice. She wants to check whether uh, an input, L, an, a statement of the form X belongs to a language L. She has random access to, her, to the input uh, X. She has online interaction with a powerful but untrusted uh, server. And now we have the standard completeness requirement, which says that if uh, X belongs to the language, then uh, Alice will accept, let's say, high probability. But now instead of saying that uh, Alice needs to reject every false statement, we say that Alice only needs to reject statements that are far, again, in Hamming distance from the language. So if X is epsilon far from the language, no matter what the cheating prover does, it can be computationally unbounded, uh, Alice is going to reject with high probability. So that's the notion of an interactive proof of proximity, or IPP. Some important parameters to bear in mind uh, within this model are the query complexity, which is the number of queries that Alex makes uh, to her in input X, the amount of communication with uh, the prover, something that we'd like to minimize, the number of rounds of interaction, of course, we don't want to be too large, and obviously the running time. So we don't want the verifier to work too hard. In particular, we'd like the verifier to run in sublinear time. And also, uh, the application that we have in mind for outsourcing computation, we also don't want the honest prover to work too hard. So in this model, cheating provers can be unbounded, but we'd like the honest prover to be, uh, say, polynomial time. So in this paper by RVW, they gave this, uh, the following results. So they constructed IPP protocols for any language uh, which is computed in bounded depth. So every language in the, the complexity class NC has an IPP with a polylogarithmic number of rounds um, and roughly square root of n query complexity, communication complexity, and verifier running time. The prover runs in polynomial time. So what I find remarkable about this result is that it captures a very large class of functions. This is uh, in contrast to the property testing um, setting in which typically for every different problem we have a completely different solution. Here they have a, a solution that handles any, any problem within this uh, very large class. But still you could ask, um, is this result tight? What do I mean by tight? So you can think of a, a few things. What about the number of rounds? So here we have a polylogarithmic number of rounds. Can we do it uh, in less? Maybe just uh, a constant number of rounds, one round? What about the class of languages? Here we had NC. That's already a lot, but can we do any uh, un, sort of polynomial depth computation rather than uh, just uh, bounded depth? And last thing, maybe most uh, interestingly, in the RVW result, the verifier runs in square root of n time. That's already sublinear and it can be is a remarkable saving, but we can be greedy. Uh, we can hope for maybe polylogarithmic running time maybe even constant running time. So can we do these things? And um, in this work, we tried to, to look at these questions, and we have, uh, we have an upper bound and a lower bound. Our upper bound addresses, or at least partially solves, uh, the first two questions. So we give a construction that simultaneously both reduces the number of rounds to just a single round of interaction. So the verifier sends a question to the server, gets back an answer, and that's it. And in addition, we, uh, we extend the, the class of languages that we can do this for from NC all the way to P. So any polynomial time computable uh, or any language that you can decide in polynomial time. But we, th this does come at a cost. So uh, in the, R the RVW result, soundness was unconditional, so for every x that was far from the language, no matter what the cheating prover did, uh, the verifier should, uh, should reject with high probability. Here we're going to restrict to only to computational soundness. So we're only uh, going to care about um, cheating servers that run in polynomial time, and in particular, they can't break crypto. And I'm going to talk uh, more about both, both results, um, but let me first say what the, the second result, it's a lower bound. And it addresses uh, the third parameter that we wanted to improve, the verifier's running time. So we actually show that the verifier's running time in the RVW IPP is, uh, in fact, inherently square root of n. So this can't be improved. 
So there is some language in NC, in fact, in NC1, for which square root of n uh, running time is necessary. And in a sense, this result also holds in the computational, uh, in the setting with computational soundness, and I'll talk more about this. The lower bound, I mean. Okay, so first things first, that's, I want to talk a little bit about the upper bound. Let me formally um, define the model. Uh, following the classical literature, we call this an argument of proximity. It's no longer going to be a proof. The verifier is not convinced um, entirely. She, uh, she only knows that the statement uh, is true as long as the cheating server is computationally bounded. So we're basically going to, uh, completeness remains the same. The model also remains the same. What we're relaxing is, uh, is soundness. So as before, we're only looking at X's that are far from the language. But now instead of considering every cheating prover strategy, we only focus on efficient polynomial time cheating provers. And for such provers, when they interact with a verifier on an input that is far from the language, the verifier should reject. Okay, so that's an argument of proximity. And it actually turns out that these are fairly easy to build if you allow a little bit of interaction. So by looking at this classical result of uh, Kilian followed up by, uh, by Mikali, they, they have a, a result of a classical argument with linear time verification. Um, and it, it's based on PCPs together with uh, collision resistant hashing. And it turns out that there's uh, a notion of a PCP of proximity. And if you use, uh, which was constructed in a work by uh, Ben Sasson et al. Um, 10 years ago, I guess. And it turns out that if you replace the PCP in the Kirian Mikali construction with the PCP of proximity, that already gives you a, a sound protocol. So what you would get is the following theorem. You get, it's based on collision resistant hashing. And what you get is a four message argument of proximity for every language which is an NP where uh, the query and communication complexity and the, the verifier's running time are all polylogarithmic. And also the prover is uh, going to be efficient as long as it gets the NP witness. Okay, so, so that's great, but that is you know, four, uh, four messages or two rounds. And the question is whether we can really reduce this all the way to one round. And what we show that is that this is indeed the case. So we show a one round argument system or argument of proximity for every language in P. Okay, so the, uh, the cryptographic assumption that we're going to assume is sub-exponentially hard fully homomorphic encryption, which I guess is a relatively mild assumption nowadays. And uh, what, what we obtain is the following, that every language in P has just a one round argument of proximity where the query, com query complexity, communication complexity, and ver verify running time are all sublinear. Specifically, they're n to the 2 thirds, and the prover runs in polynomial time. So you might wonder where this n to the 2 thirds come from, comes from, and we also wonder this, so we think this can be improved to square root of n, but we haven't um, sort of fully proved that yet, but we believe that this is possible. Square root of n as in RVW. So I won't have time to show you the, the full proof, but let me just give, so, show you so, sort of a quick outline of the proof. So the idea is first to construct an information theoretic object, which is an, a multi an MIP of proximity, a multi-prover interactive proof of proximity, which is an extension of an interactive proof of proximity where you allow multiple non-communicating uh, servers. In fact, we are going to let them sort of communicate in this uh, no signaling sense that we heard about in the, in the previous talk. It was a, the, the no signaling was, a, was with a different spelling, but it's the same notion. But uh, anyhow, I, I won't, uh, I won't get, get into this uh, construction. Let me just mention that it's uh, sort of a non-trivial combination of a protocol that we had in a result uh, together with, uh, yeah, with uh, Kalai and Raz um, last year, together with this RVW construction, it takes protocols from both and combines them in a, in a non-trivial way. We have to work a little bit to, to make it work. Once we have this MIP of, uh, of proximity, we can tra transform the ladder using more or less uh, tools that are, all, are already known in the classical setting using uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Um, this is a heuristic that was suggested in a work by Ayelo Bat, Ostrovsky, and Roj Gopalan in 2000, and it was shown to be secure in a work uh, two years ago, again, with uh, Kalai and Raz, assuming that the MIP has this uh, no, strong no-signaling soundness property. 
Okay, so that's the first result. The second result is uh, this lower bound that I mentioned. In fact, it's, it's going to be two lower bounds. And here we're also going to have a cryptographic assumption, which I don't see why, why uh, I see why our proof needs it, but I don't see why for the result it would be needed, and I think it's uh, very interesting to try to get rid of this uh, assumption. Regardless, the assumption is the following. So we assume an exponentially strong length doubling uh, cryptographic PRG, which is computable in NC1. And if you're worried about the, this exponentially strong, if you're only willing to assume less, a sub-exponential, this only uh, deteriorates our lower bound, but it, it will still, the lower bound will still hold with uh, the parameters will be slightly worse. Assuming this assumption, we show a language in NC1, so very low complexity class, for which every interactive proof of proximity requires square root of n complexity, say verifier running time. I should note that RVW already had a lower bound, but their lower bound only worked for constant round protocols, and in fact, the quality of their lower bound deteriorated with a number of rounds. Our result is sort of independent of the number of rounds. It can be square root of n rounds for all, for all we care. The second result is an extension to this notion of a one round argument of proximity. Um, it says again that there's a language for which every one round argument of proximity requires square root of n complexity. If we allow two rounds, we have this result, we have the result using PCPs of proximity, which overcomes the square root of n barrier. But there are a lot of stars there. So the stars say, basically say that this only rules out constructions that are based on standard assumptions and use standard proof techniques. And I won't get into exactly what's written over there, but this is uh, both based and similar to a result by uh, Gentry and Wicks from a few years ago. So I want to give you a little bit of intuition about this lower bound. So the idea is to look at a hard NP language. Let's stay for, for a minute, let's think of uh, the language as being 3SAT. We don't know how to make it actually work with, with 3SAT, but let's think of, of that for a second. And let's consider a related language, which is actually quite easy to, to compute. So the inputs of this language consist of pairs of X's and W's, the X's are in error correcting code, for, for a second you can ignore that. But think of the uh, instances as being composed of instances and witnesses, and what you want to check is that the witness is valid. So think of you're getting a formula and an assignment, and you want to check that the assignment uh, satisfies the formula. This is uh, this language l easy. The intuition in the IPP setting is because the verifier can only read a limited number of bits from the witness, it has to decide whether X is in the language only given sort of part of the witness, which already seems to be something hard. In addition to reading parts of the witness, it also has online interaction with, uh, with the prover, uh, which also supplies it with some uh, bounded amount of, of information, potentially about the witness. So we need, uh, what we're looking for is, uh, 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 this, uh, the properties that we need from this hard language uh, L hard is that it remain hard even given both uh, the, the, the algorithm that's trying to decide L hard is given both Oracle access to say square root of n over 100 bits of a potent, an, an alleged witness. Okay, so square root of n bits of the uh, satisfying assignment, uh, alleged satisfying assignment. And in addition, square root of n communication with an all powerful but untrusted prover. Okay, so that's uh, the properties that we need. Uh, I won't have time to show you the, the actual construction of the language. As you can assume, it's based on this cryptographic PRG that we assumed. Okay, so uh, just to summarize, what we showed is a protocol that achieves sublinear time uh, verification for any language in P, and it uses only one round of communication, uh, but it, it, it does assume computational soundness on uh, that the cheating provers are, are uh, computationally bounded. One corollary that I didn't have time to, to go over is even if you don't like this model of sublinear time verification, you can use uh, this result in order to get linear time verification, which is something that you would think uh, we already knew, but actually 
All, all the results on uh, linear time verification typically achieve only quasi-linear time. Uh, using this, uh, these results on sublinear time verification, you can actually get exact results without the proximity with exact linear time verification, which is just a, a cute uh, thing to know. That's the upper bound that we have. Um, in terms of a lower bound, we show that square root of n is in fact tight for these interactive proof of proximities uh, for a language in NC1, and in a sense for arguments of proximity for P. If you're interested specifically about uh, in uh, no signaling MIPs, then we also have a lower bound, an information uh, a lower bound there for no signaling MIPs of proximity. And uh, just two open questions that I'd like to conclude with is first of all, what about constructing better proofs or arguments of proximity for more languages or more classes? Uh, so some progress on that has been made. So in a joint work with Goldreich and Gu, we have a construction of interactive proofs of proximity for, sub, for certain subclasses of NC with, say, a polylogarithmic complexity rather than the square root of n. Um, but I think getting, even for like uh, specific properties that people in the property testing literature are interested in, um, getting improved results specifically for those would be very interesting. The other thing that personally really bugs me is the fact that our lower bound for interactive proofs of proximity is based on a cryptographic assumption. I would expect a lower bound that's really both information theoretic and somehow based on the combinatorics of the problem rather than on uh, the computational complexity. So that's it. <laughs>